go have a look at travel graphs. Let's travel back to year eight. Remember travel graphs? <laughs> right. But, but, difference is we don't need to use straight lines anymore because we know other graphs. So our ball is bounced and its distance from the ground is graphed. And we end up actually with a lovely parabola. And so it's distance versus time. The actual equation of that particular parabola is 5t, 8 minus t. Okay. So distance, remember, is the total amount travelled. I'm going to introduce a new term now, which is used uh, in physics, but also in motion that we look at, and that is displacement, which a lot of you would be aware of, but just a refresher if you're not. Well, actually, if you're not, it wouldn't be a refresher, would it? But anyway, displacement is how far you are from the starting point. So in some situations, distance and displacement will be the same. Uh, so for instance, looking at this graph, after two seconds, what is it? It looks like it's around about 40. And so the distance from where I've started is 40. So that means its displacement is 40 and its distance is 40. Whereas if we go over to here where say t is equal to six, the distance it has traveled, it's gone up to 80 back down to 40, so it'd be 120, but its displacement is still only 40. Because it doesn't matter how far out you've gone, displacement is simply how far are you from your starting point or your point of reference. So, find the height of the ball after one second. Of course, because we have an equation, we don't actually need the graph. We can simply sub in t equals one, and we get the answer of 35. So we know it's 35 metres above the ground. At what other times, time, or I guess it's just one, is the ball the same? Well, let's solve when x equals 35. A little quadratic to solve. Multiplies together to give 7, adds together to give negative 8. So it's after one second, that's the one we've already found. But then again, after 7 seconds, it'll be 35 metres above the ground. All right, now, velocity. We know speed is distance over time. Velocity is displacement over time. Okay. So, the difference in our x values over the difference in our, our time values, if you like. So if we're gonna find the average velocity, then it would be, well, we just first said that after the first second, we're at 35 metres. So 35 minus 0 over 1 minus 0, which is 35. So the average velocity for the first second was 35 metres per second. During the fifth second, okay, well, when t equals 4, because the fifth second will go from t equals 4 to t equals 5, uh, it's at 80. And when t equals 5, it's at 75. So the average velocity would be 75 minus 80. And you see we actually get a negative number. And this is another difference between uh, velocity and speed, displacement and distance. When we're just talking about distance or speed, we don't have negative numbers. But velocity and displacement, we can have negative numbers. And basically it's telling us the direction in which we're travelling. And so if we assume we start off travelling in a positive direction, then negative would mean, well, we must be going back in the other direction. We're going in the opposite direction. So we started out, our ball started out going up, so the average velocity is negative 5, so its average velocity must be travelling down. So negative 5 metres per second. During the whole 8 seconds in the air, well, it started at zero and it finished at zero, so its average velocity is zero. So it didn't move, on average. Right. But again, that's the difference between velocity and speed. And it makes sense if you think about it. If I'm still where I started, then it's like I haven't moved at all, and that's why the average velocity is zero. Average speed, as I was saying, remember speed is distance over time. So the average speed over those eight seconds, well now, 
the distance traveled is not zero. The displacement was zero, but we've gone up and we've gone down. So the distance traveled is 160. So over the time, the average speed is 20 meters per second. Okay, 3A.